what's it like to cruise in a suite? And if it's your first time in a suite, what are the important things that you should do and not do? Today, we've got a first-timer's look at staying in a suite on a Royal Caribbean cruise ship up next. Hey everyone, it's Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com. Suites are at the upper echelon of the cruise ship experience, and there's plenty of people who think one day they're going to give it a shot themselves, including our own video editor here, Jenna from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com. Jenna usually stays in inside cabins because, well, that's what we pay for for her to go on these cruises. But when she recently went on the Liberty of the Seas, we thought it'd be a good idea for her to stay in a suite. In fact, we booked her an owner suite that came in at $870 per night. Now, as somebody by her own admission would say is a budget traveler, staying in a suite was kind of a big change for her because she usually books those smaller rooms, and she honestly felt like it was a little bit of royalty involved with it. No pun intended. Royal Caribbean, get it? Uh -huh. Anyway, with anything that's new, whether we're talking about suites or really anything, there are definitely some lessons learned from staying in a suite. So this week, Jenna is sharing her big takeaways from her first time in a Royal Caribbean suite. The first thing I learned was that the sweet concierge was super beneficial. He contacted us before the cruise to provide helpful information and was always available on board whenever I had questions. When people book a cruise and they look to stay in a suite, a lot of times I think people get overly obsessed with the room, but they overlook the sweet concierge. And the sweet concierge is one of the most helpful people on a cruise ship if you're staying in a suite. This person is your own little personal guest services, and they can do a lot for you in making your cruise just a little bit better. Off the bat, you're going to get an email from them about a couple days before the sailing, usually a little less than a week beforehand to let you know what the services that are available and even to start booking some things. My favorite early benefit to staying in a suite is the ability for the concierge to book you reservations, especially restaurants. Yes, yeah, so if you have a dining package, usually you have to wait to get on board the ship to make reservations with the dining package, but the sweet concierge, in my experience, has always been able to make reservations for me before I get on board. So not only does it get me the times and the days I want at the restaurants that I want, but more importantly, I don't have to waste time when I'm on board the ship going to a restaurant and taking the time to make reservations. It's a huge benefit. Then, of course, when you're on board the ship, the concierge is there to make your life easier. Any questions, issues you may have, they provide a huge benefit when it comes to your onboard experience. And really, not only should you get to know them, I would say number one, when you get on board the ship, Talk to the concierge on day one. We'll make sure they're aware of you. Certainly, they have an amazing memory. On a number of sailings, the concierge has actually remembered who we are from previous sailings. And in cases in which we don't introduce ourselves on the first day or two, they will literally track us down to figure out where we've been, why we haven't been hanging out in the concierge lounge. It's a nice touch and certainly adds to what the experience is with the sweet concierge. The second thing I learned during my first sweet experience was that the exclusive sweets only breakfast in Chops Grill was amazing. I loved having a private place to enjoy breakfast away from the crowds. Having access to Chops Grill for breakfast is a nice benefit because not only does it give you a special area for you, but it provides seating in a case in which the windjammer could be a little busier. You know, I was on the same sailing as Jenna, not staying in a suite, by the way. And I had to contend with the crowds in the Windjammer. And for breakfast, boy, this can really be contentious, especially if you're trying to get to the Windjammer during the peak hours. The peak hours are really any time after about 8.30 a.m. all the way up to about 10 o'clock. There's a lot of trouble getting a table in some cases. And when you're staying in a suite, you don't have to worry about all that. You just go right to the Chops Grill restaurant and enjoy your meal there without having to wait for a table or, or even have to get up in line and get your own food. It's a really nice perk to have. Again, not that anyone should book a cruise because... There's a private room to have breakfast in, but it's certainly a nice benefit having that. My third lesson learned on Liberty of the Seas was that embarkation was so much easier in a suite compared to a regular cabin. When you book a suite, grand suite or above, it really makes such a huge difference to have that priority embarkation and priority disembarkation. It just makes things easier. Again, when you stay in a suite, it's more than just the room. It's those services provided. And making it easier is really the mantra that staying in a suite is all about. Yeah, you get a lot more living room, but you also get, of course, those services that are there. The concierge is a huge part of that. So make sure you get to meet them. But really, if you or somebody in your party is a little impatient, well, certainly staying in a suite can help that a little bit. Another lesson I learned was that despite my initial skepticism, a suite can totally be worth the cost. 
I like how Jenna said that a suite can totally be worth the cost because when it comes to booking a suite, a lot of people look at that price tag and they say, listen, the cost of that suite is going to be the equivalent of, you know, two or even three regular cabin cruises, right? You can get more money out of it. Why should you spend the money on a suite? But really, it's about that lifestyle. It's about treating yourself. For a lot of people, when they book a cruise, sometimes it is an escape. It is, hey, I've got a limited budget. We're going to go and enjoy some time away from home and work. And it's just a couple days away from it all, right? Totally understand that. But for other people, they're looking at it as not only an escape, not only a vacation, but a way to treat themselves. They've worked hard. They spent a lot of time and effort getting from work and the day-to-day -day grind to where they are in vacation. So if they're going to be on vacation and get away from things, they want to enjoy it as much as possible. And that's really where a suite comes in. Again, it's more than the sum of its parts. It's more than that price tag, which is not cheap, but it's a really nice way to spend your time when you're on board a cruise. Now, I'd also point out that suites come in all sorts of prices and there can be some actual value from suites, but we're not here to talk about whether or not to get the lowest possible price on a suite. We're here to talk about the idea that Jenna came to, which is that despite the skepticism, a suite can totally be worth that cost. And really, at the end of the day, if you're celebrating something special, if you're just looking to treat yourself, there's a lot of good reasons to stay in a suite. And I certainly came to the same conclusion when I started trying a suite or two. Not that I have to stay in a suite every single time, but it's certainly really nice to have that, especially when I'm cruising with my kids. Because at the end of the day, having those services makes it easier on everybody involved. Not to say you can't have a good cruise or a wonderful cruise, in fact, in a non-suite room, but it just makes it a lot easier. Essentially, staying in a suite is like hitting the easy button. Not to say you can't have a great time in a non-suite, but that money that you're paying for it certainly makes your life just a little bit simpler. The fifth and final lesson I learned from my first suite experience was that even though the suite was amazing, I am 100% okay with booking cheaper cabins for my cruises. As I mentioned earlier, I was on the same sailing as Jenna, and I was staying in an inside room on this, the polar opposite of the suite experience, but I'm with Jenna that it's really nice to stay in a suite, but at the end of the day, it's also okay booking cheaper cabins. Ultimately, when I choose a cabin, a lot of it has to deal with who I'm cruising with, what are my goals financially, and of course, logistically, and who are we sailing with, and kind of what is the overarching theme to the sailing, right? If it's me and my wife, and we're celebrating our anniversary, yeah, I think I'm gonna spend a little bit more money on a suite. But if we're cruising and it's just me or we're doing a weekend cruise, you know what? An inside room is totally fine because we're not going to spend that much time in the cabin. We're going to be out and about maximizing our time on board and then we're back to work on Monday morning, right? Kind of depends what your goals are. And booking inside rooms or just cheaper cabins, it could even be a junior suite because they're going to be cheaper than a full suite. There's absolutely nothing wrong with going with the cheaper cabins because at the end of the day, the cruise experience is more than just the cabin. This isn't a hotel room, which is very different than when you're staying on land or you're renting an Airbnb or something like this. You're not totally beholden to what the accommodations can account for in your day-to-day -day things. On a cruise ship, you're really only in your cabin to shower, change, and sleep. Now, if you're staying in a suite, you may spend more time there, making more of a point to spend more time in your room. But at the end of the day, the cruise ship, and the places you're visiting are still more important. And so if it has to come down to it, and I'd rather just go for a cheaper cabin on a cruise, it's totally okay. I certainly don't mind staying in a suite again by any means, and I will, but booking into some of those cheaper cabins is totally fine as well. One thing I wish I did differently during my first suite experience was taking better advantage of the suite lounge. It's such a nice area with free drinks in the evening, but I had little time to enjoy it. I agree about taking advantage of the suite lounge more. This is something that I really struggle with. My kids were younger. I kind of felt a little leery about bringing my kids in there. Not that they're not allowed in there, but I certainly never want to be that person who's got the noisy kids in there. You know, today my kids are relatively speaking better behaved. Any parent out there knows what I'm talking about, but I certainly don't have any problems with bringing my kids into the suite lounge. But really, I think the suite lounge is more of a state of mind than it is location. What I mean by that is in a lot of cases, You've got to commit yourself to just going there without this necessarily a goal of accomplishing a task. Like for a lot of cases, I look at the suite lounges. Oh, I'm only going to go there if I need to talk to the concierge. I want to get a drink or I want to get something to eat. But for a lot of people who really embrace the suite life on a cruise ship, they will look at the suite lounge as the destination. They're not going there to accomplish anything per se. They're looking to simply hang out and enjoy the experience. And on a ship like Liberty or any of the ships in the fleet for that matter, Going to the suite lounge and spending time in there, especially in the evening hours, is when you're going to have the greatest social factor involved. You can possibly meet other guests. 
You can enjoy the ambiance that you get the views from the Sweet Lounge. And of course, you never know what's going to happen. A lot of people will point out that the Sweet Lounge experience is more than just sitting around and having a drink. Sometimes you can strike up a conversation, make a friendship, or simply observe something and have a nice time. During the daytime, a lot of people will simply go to the Sweet Lounge because it's quiet. They'll read a book. They'll bring a movie to watch with, of course, headphones on, and they'll just enjoy the overall experience. And I got to tell you that I often struggle with this because I don't take full advantage of the Sweet Lounge when I'm on a cruise ship. Part of it also may deal with the ship itself. As an example, if you remember recently, I stayed in the Aqua Theater Suite on Wonder of the Seas, and it was a wonderful room, really, really nice, but it was really far away. And the fact that the Sweet Lounge was up on Deck 17, but my room was on the way to the back on Deck 9, it really made it a trek, relatively speaking, to get over to the Sweet Lounge. So it's a little more difficult. But if you have a cabin that's more convenient to the Sweet Lounge, that makes it a lot easier. So if you're looking to take full advantage of the Sweet Lounge experience, beyond just motivating yourself, it also really helps if you have a cabin that's nearby. Certainly, if you're staying in an Oasis-class cruise ship and your cabin is on the Sweet Deck, boy, that makes it so much easier. Another thing I wish I did differently was order main dining room meals to my cabin. When I first started staying in the suites, I took advantage of the ability to order the main dining room meals to the cabin. I thought it was a really cool idea, and I think Jenna did as well. Over time, I've kind of gone to the fact that while it's neat to do that, I still prefer going to the restaurant for the overall experience. But I will say I agree that it's a really good idea to order room service to the cabin for my kids. My kids prefer to kind of do it on their schedule. They don't like sitting around and just yapping with other adults. To them, that's extremely boring. They just want to eat and then be on to the next activity. So what's really nice if we're staying in a suite is we can order the kids food up to the cabin and they can enjoy the food over there. Meanwhile, we can then later go on by ourselves down to the restaurant and enjoy either the main dining room or even especially a restaurant without them. Meanwhile, the kids get to do what they want to do, right? In Adventure Ocean or whomever they're hanging out with. Ultimately, I really like this benefit and I think it's a vastly underrated benefit when you're staying in a suite because not only is room service included with your cruise fare if you're staying in a full suite, but also you can order from the main dining room in the hours in which the main dining room is actually open. So give it a try, whether you do it for dinner or for another meal, it's just nice to have that. Also, it expands the menu because the room service menu doesn't change every day, but of course the main dining room menu does, especially for dinner. So that's really nice to have. The last thing I wish I did differently during my first cruise experience was to book a cruise with a sea day. Our itinerary was only three nights and we visited a new port each day. Having a sea day would have given me more time to enjoy the sweet experience. There's no doubt if you're staying in a suite, having at least one or more sea days really enhances the experience. When you're in port, there's a huge temptation to get off the ship and do things in port, right? That's a major attraction of a cruise. So certainly on a short sailing like Jenna did, which was only a three-nighter with two port days and no sea days, it really forces you to either pick between doing shore excursions or staying on the ship. And it seems like a compromise in either way. So ultimately, if you're going to stay in a suite or you're going to bite the bullet to try a suite for the very first time, yes, ideally... It would be on a longer sailing, at least a four night sailing. I would even say a six or seven night sailing really, because that way you get a good mix of the both of sea days and port days. But I wouldn't necessarily look at a three night cruise as problematic. If you're staying in a suite for a lot of people who ultimately try a suite, especially on a short cruise, they've been there, done that a little bit, right? If it's your first cruise, it's going to be really tough to get your money's worth out of it in the sense that you're not going to spend that much time on board, but and still, it's nice to have those benefits we talked about earlier in the video, like the suite lounge and the concierge services. But when you have that awesome cabin, boy, it can be tempting to spend all of your time in there. So yes, I agree with Jenna that ideally, if you're going to try a suite, I would do it on a longer sailing that has some time in which you can really take advantage of it like a sea day. So there you have it. My and Jenna's thoughts on staying in a suite on a Royal Caribbean cruise ship. Have you ever stayed in a suite? If you have, what are your thoughts? on the best advantages and disadvantages of staying in a cabin in like a suite. And if you haven't booked a suite yet, what is stopping you? Probably rhymes with the word Bryce, but if it doesn't, let me know what you think about the decision-making process of staying in a suite. If you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications. That way YouTube will let you know we have a brand new video to share. This has been Matt from RoyalCarbonblog.com. We'll talk again real soon.